Hi everybody and welcome to my cooking demo today. I, we are going to be continuing on our tea party food this month for all of May. I want to show you a picture of a tea party that I did on Mother's Day with my two daughters. We also had eight of their granddaughters with them as well. So you can see a little bit of our tea party there. Don't look at all the mess in the background. But anyway, that is a tea party that we just did on Sunday for Mother's Day. It was so much fun. The girls just loved it. All the little girls just had a blast with it. And my grandson and my husband and one of my son-in-laws helped us to serve. And so it was so much fun um, having them serve us. Our little grandson, Gabriel, came around and put little lumps of sugar in our teacups with our little tea tongs and so sugar tongs. He had such a blast doing that and the girls loved say, saying, oh, servant boy, can you come help me out? So they had a blast doing that. Uh, my husband also wanted to display some artwork here behind me today that some grandkids have made. We have lots of this on our refrigerator, but we thought it would be a nice backdrop for today. So today we are going to be making lemon curd and Devonshire cream. We're going to get a two for one today. The first recipe that we're going to make is lemon curd. It does take a little bit of time, so hopefully you guys will all bear with me. By the way, I am Debbie Reynolds with Rocky Mountain Lodge. And um, the recipes that I'm going to make today you can find on my website at RockyMountainLodge.com. And they are also in my cookbook, Rocky Mountain Lodge and Cabins, More Favorite Recipes. And you can purchase this at our cookbook, or at our website as well. So you can go there and get that. And um, so it's pretty easy on the ingredients for lemon curd. What I have here so far is I have four eggs that I've beaten lightly just with a fork. I have one stick, a half a cup of butter that I have diced up. I have two cups of sugar and I have four lemons, which I have zested the, gr the grinds of the four lemons. And then I have juiced those four lemons to make about a cup of lemon juice. And so I'm gonna show you just a couple of little tips about um, lemons. When you're gonna use your lemons, um, the first thing you're going to want to do with your lemons is you're going to take it and you want to roll it on your counter and that is going to release the juices. It's going to crush those cells in there and all the juices will be released. And so if your lemon is a little bit hard, just rub it on the counter and break up those juices. And then before you cut your lemons up, you're going to want to zest it. So I have a little microplane zester right here. And so one of the tips you wanna remember about zesting lemons or oranges or any other citrus is you just wanna get the bare outsides. You don't wanna grate the rind, the white part, because that part is bitter. So you're just gonna grate that till you can see, let me see if I can figure out how I do that to where you can see it. I'm not very good at this yet because I'm working backwards. So you can see that there's still lemon, or there's still white there that you can see. And so then you're just gonna cut it in half and then you're gonna juice it. So there's a few different ways you can juice it. If you don't have any type of a juicer, just cut it in half and then you can squeeze it over your bowl and catch the seeds in your hands. Make sure they're clean hands, catch your seeds and then let all the juice go into a bowl or Years ago, I got this little plastic um, juicer here and I just put it in the bowl and then I just take my little lemon and I put it on there and I twist it. There's also, I wonder if I still have one. I used to have a wooden one. Let me see. I don't know if I still have my wooden juicer anymore. I used to have just a little citrus ream that I would stick it in there and just um, ream it. And then my favorite thing that I got, I like to collect little different tools. Kitchen, I call them kitchen tools. I have this little thing that attaches right here to my KitchenAid mixer. So I just attach this to my KitchenAid mixer and turn on the mixer and you just put your lemons right here and it just zips them up really fast and juices them really quickly. So that's one of my favorite little tools that I like to use. But if you don't have any tools, just squeeze them into your hands, catch the seeds, um, with, and have a bowl underneath so that you're catching all those juices. 
So a couple of tips about zesting and juicing your lemons. All right, and so now we're just gonna take a bowl. We're gonna use a double boiler to cook this lemon curd. I don't actually have a double boiler, so what I do is I have a big pot that I have boiling water in, and we're gonna move over to my uh, stove here in a minute, and we'll work there. So I'm just gonna put all of my ingredients right now into this bowl. So we have one stick of butter, a half a cup of butter, which I've cubed up, our lemon zest from four lemons. We're gonna put that all in there. Okay, I think I might have lost you guys there for a second. For some reason, my internet is not good. So hopefully, guys, you're all still there. And so now I'm just going to scoop all of these four eggs in there that I've just kind of whisked up. And the juice from four lemons, it's about one cup there. And my two cups of sugar. All right, so that's all the ingredients you need. And now I'm going to move on over to my stove. I have to switch my phone here from the little stand that I've got here on my island to a different stand that I have on by my stove. And my husband Brian's gonna help me out here. He's gonna do that. And so I'm just gonna start whisking and I'll show you my double boiler action. Perfect, thanks honey. Yep. So this is my contraption for a double boiler. All you do is take a pot and you put it in there and you put a couple of inches of water in there. And then you're going to put your big uh, pan uh, right on top of that. You want to make sure that they're not touching the water because otherwise it'll be too hot. And the reason why we want to do this over a double boiler is... We don't want to scramble the eggs in here. If the, egg, if the eggs are too hot right on the flames, it can scramble your eggs. And now, so our water, you just want to make sure that water is nice and hot and boiling so all the steam is going to come up and it's going to slowly cook this. So right here you can see we've got our, all of our ingredients. Hi, Vicki. Hi, Kathleen. I knew you would be here, Kathleen. Hi, Ken. I know you can't see me very good on this, but... It's all about the food, really. All right, so we are just going to keep stirring this. And you have to stir this constantly because you don't want your eggs to scramble. What will happen is you'll end up with little white bits from your egg yolks or your egg whites that will end up being in here. And if that happens, don't pitch it. It's still going to taste just as good. It's just not going to look as pretty. You can also put it over a little strainer and strain out those bits, but that's kind of difficult to do. But if you just stir it constantly, we're gonna stir this until it thickens. And while I'm stirring this, I'm gonna tell you a couple of other things. When I'm done cooking this, it's gonna get thickened. And then after I'm done cooking it, right next to this, I know you can't really see it, but I have another pot with some boiling water and I have some mason jars in there and the lids and the rims. And they're nice and hot in hot boiling water so that the glasses are hot. And then what I'm gonna do after this is nice and hot, I'm gonna put them directly into those jars and put the lids on them. And then they're gonna, I'm gonna let them seal. And so then they'll stay sealed for several months. I actually will like to keep them in the refrigerator just in case. But um, I've actually kept these in the refrigerator for over a year when they're nice and sealed fully and they will last a really long time. So that's how you can store this. And so, and I'll let you know a little bit about some of my upcoming videos while we're working on getting this to stir. It takes a while, and this gets getting a little hot here, so I'm gonna grab a pot holder to hang on to that. So excuse me one second. Get a couple of pot holders here, one for right now. So. You can see there's still some butter bits in there, so they're not all melted. And once they melt, this actually takes about 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes to, to thicken once it gets hot. But once it starts to thicken, it's gonna thicken super fast. So make sure you pay attention to it once it starts to thicken. And don't stop stirring it because you don't wanna make scrambled eggs. Um, so next week, Come on back. We're going to be teaching uh, one of the most important things to also have at tea parties are, are cookies. And so I have um, 
always serve shortbread cookies when I have tea parties. And so next week, I'm gonna teach you how to make Scottish shortbread cookies. I know you can only see half of my face. It's not even the good half. Well, is that the good half? I don't even know. Anyways, so now all my butter is melted in here. You can see that. So come back next week and we will make shortbread cookies. I have some that I made for the tea party on Sunday and I will show you some of those here when we're done to tempt you to come. I haven't posted the recipe for those yet, but I will probably tomorrow. All right, so now that everything's melted, it's not thickening quite yet, but it will soon as it gets heated. Um, and so I was going to tell you something else about lemon curd and now I forgot. But the week after that, so not, not next week, but the following week, we're going to have tea sandwiches, something else that you can always have at tea parties or should always have at tea parties. And I will be having a special guest make those with me in two weeks. I'm not going to tell you yet because it's going to be a surprise. Somebody super special to me is going to help me make tea sandwiches in two weeks. So, but for today, this is what we're going to have. I think, well, I don't know. Maybe I won't have anybody special making it. Anyway, we're going to see going to see somebody, and we might actually be back by then. I'll let you know. But next week, tune in for cookies. All right, so this is starting to thicken just a little bit, but not enough. All right, so any questions that anybody have? Yes, Kathleen, you are so right. Um, we're, we are going to be seeing my mom and dad soon, but... Um, um, I think we might be leaving on Tuesday, so I'm not sure that we'll be there. But my mom has actually been my inspiration for cooking. She always cooked for a crowd. Growing up Polish, we always had lots of family. My mom had, there was 10 kids in my mom's family. And so every holiday, all of the aunts and uncles would get together. All of the cousins would come. There was a lot of us. And so... She would always cook for a crowd. And growing up with me, there was five kids, and so we always still had a lot of food. And, okay, this is starting to thicken. It's getting closer. But I don't want to stop it, especially now is when you don't want to stop stirring because you don't want those eggs to um, scramble up. But it's looking good. It's nice and yellow. It's nice and smooth. I know it's kind of a pain, but you know what? You get a really good workout right here while you're, while you're doing these eggs. And so this last Sunday for tea parties, when I had a Mother's Day tea party with my girls and 10, we did eight of my 10 granddaughters. We had, we had scones, two different kinds of scones, lemon curd, Devonshire cream, strawberry jam. This is almost done. Just another couple more minutes. I can feel it with my whisk getting thicker. Um... And then we had sandwiches. We had three different kinds of sandwiches. We had chicken chicken salad sandwiches on croissants, cucumber sandwiches, which are really a traditional must, and egg salad sandwiches. And then for our dessert, we had shortbread cookies. I made lemon butter cookies in the shapes of little teapots. And then I made some little mini fruit tarts. And so that was our tea party. And then we had a few different kinds of teas and all the boys served us. It was so much fun. Your grandma had, Vicki says, my grandma had 11 and my mom had nine. Big families, and now you just have one. But you had a lot of cousins. Okay, so this is nice and thick. I'm gonna shut this burner off here. And now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this off the burner so it doesn't continue to cook. And I am going to bring this back over to the kitchen and then I'll come and grab you guys here in a minute. Actually, not the kitchen, the island. Let me grab my jars. You can see here how I've got my jars in boiling water, my mason jars. So I'm going to put those in there. All right, now I'm going to grab you guys and bring you back over to my other stand. Does anybody have any questions so far about making this lemon curd? Speak now. I won't say forever hold your peace because you can continue to ask questions. All right. So I'm going to also grab a ladle here. All right. And now I'm going to 
put this back on my other stand here. One of these days I'll get a little bit better. Whoops, set up. I'll get a little bit better set up. But right now I am definitely not the pro. Thanks guys for bearing with me with all of that. Okay, oops, that's crooked. Okay, let's see. All right, bring it down a little. Okay, so now let me show you this curd, how beautiful it is. Nice and silky and creamy. You can see all that. You guys see that cream, that curd? Whoop. Okay, so I am just going to now get a funnel. If I can find my funnel. All right. Well, I can't find my funnel, so we will just go to plan B. I'm not the only one that pushes, puts dishes away around here. Some other people put them away. I won't say who, but I'm sure you can guess. Um, and things just don't always go where they're supposed to go. And then I can't find them. And I'm gonna get a little towel. So you can see that wasn't too much work to make that curd. It just takes a little bit of time to stir it. So I'm gonna use, I'm just gonna pull out one of these jars that are nice and hot. Let's see here. Put them on a towel. And normally I would put a funnel on here and funnel this in. My hands are kind of, I can take all this heat. Some people can't take this heat, but I'm just gonna put these all in there. You guys can probably see me doing this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kinda of semi-can these it's not really the official way to can, but we we'll wanna put this to about a half an inch from the top of the rim. And then I'm gonna wipe the rims off so that there's nothing on the excess, on the outsides there so my rims will seal. All right, so you can see how pretty that lemon curd is. And now I'm gonna get a lid, one of these mason lids and put that on there find one that i can get to okay so i've got a little lid and i'll dry it off a little bit and then i'm going to put that right on top and then put one of these rims on there and then i'll just wait for it to seal if you hear it pop then you know it has sealed well if they don't pop just keep them in your fridge and eat them in the next couple weeks it'll be great all right, and so then you can do that with all the rest of your curd. I'll do the rest of this a little later because we are gonna move on to our Devonshire cream. So we've got our curd right there, and it's gonna thicken up even more as it's in the fridge. I have some right here left over from our, that I made last weekend from our tea party. And you can see that it gets kind of thick there which is perfect, that way it'll sit on your scones and not just run all off. All right, and now we're gonna move on to our Devonshire cream. Let me grab my mixer. Okay. See if I, my mixer will reach here. I might have to do a different outlet. Doesn't want to totally reach, so I'm just gonna turn my video a little bit. Okay, all right, so I have this great KitchenAid mixer. And so Devonshire cream is the easiest thing you'll make for your tea party. It takes three ingredients total. You're gonna to need a half a cup of whipping cream, a half a cup of sour cream, and two tablespoons of powdered sugar. And I'm gonna go grab those out of the fridge right now. Okay, so we are gonna start with our half a cup of cream, whipping cream. And this is really mock Devonshire cream because Devonshire cream actually comes from cows 
from Devon, England. And since this cream is not from Devon, England cows, it's a mock Devonshire cream. So we're just gonna put that um, whipping cream in there. I am going to add my powdered sugar and close that up. And now I'm going to just whip this up. My mixer's a little loud, but you wanna whip this till your peaks get a bit stiff. Any other questions anybody have about any of these or any other tea party questions? Any other things that you'd like to see me make? Make sure to like this video, share this video, comment on it. And as I mentioned before, you can visit our website at RockyMountainLodge.com to find all of these websites under my recipe tab. And you can also purchase, purchase my cookbook, Rocky Mountain Lodge and Cabins, more favorite recipes. This is my second edition. I came out with my first one in 2008 and that sold out. And so I made this one about two and a half years ago. And so you just want to whip this cream until stiff peaks form. KitchenAid mixers definitely are the cheater way to do this. You can use a hand mixer too. I've even used a whisk before. If you want a good arm workout, that's I didn't know Vicky, I have not added the sour cream yet. So right now it's just the whipped cream, whipping cream and the powdered sugar. My sour cream. It's right here, and we are going to fold that in here in a little bit. Um, no, I don't need for this to be cold first. Thanks, that's a good question, everybody. Um, so no, it's not necessary. My bowl is just room temperature. So it's not like I'm going to bake something in the oven. Almost done. You know how it is you have to get all that air in there to make things light and fluffy. I'll show it to you once I get it all whipped, but it's almost there. You're gonna want it to be like medium heat. You don't want them so stiff that you don't want them to just be guilty, because once you add your sour cream, it'll just be runny. All right, so I've got it where I want it. And I'll show you what this is like here in a sec. All right, so I'm just gonna, you can see how there's a little bit of um, whipped cream just kind of hanging off of that beater right there and then they looks like this. You can see that if you stick your beater in there you're going to get little peaks but not super stiff. Okay all right so there is that. I'm going to move away this mixer because we are done with this. Hi Melody good to see you. It's so good that you guys keep coming back every week and it's good to see new people. And so now that this is done, we're gonna fold in our sour cream. And the reason why we're gonna fold it in is because if we don't fold it in and just whip it in, it's going to um, flatten out those nice um, peaks that we've got. So we're just gonna fold this in, the sour cream. And this sour cream gives that pat, uh, whipped cream just a little bit of tang. Now here's another tip about sour cream. Um, if you want this to be just a little bit healthier version, but we've already got cream in there and sugar, so why would we want it any more healthy? But there is a way that you can do that. You can always substitute non-fat plain Greek yogurt for sour cream in anything you're using sour cream for to make it a little bit more healthy. All right, and so there we're done with our Devonshire cream, and you can see that. And so there's our two for one. And so then we're just gonna take one of our scones that we made. These are actually leftover scones from my tea party on Sunday. And so I've got one cut in half and then I'm just gonna add a little bit of my cold lemon curd. You can use your lemon curd hot too, um, but I'll just put a little bit of curd on there. And then a dollop of this cream. And there you have it. Scones with freshly made lemon curd and Devonshire cream. Delicious. Oh, I better, I better not yet. Okay, still have more talking to do. Just, just a minute. All right, so I just promised you that I would show you my shortbread cookies. We are gonna make these next week. These are my favorite, my personal favorite tea party cookies. These are shortbread cookies. 
You can see those. These are Scottish shortbread cookies. I'm not sure if you can see all these. Um, but we will be making these. I'm not sure if you can see it above or below. But we will be making these delicious sh Scottish shortbread cookies next Wednesday at 2 o'clock. So tune in then. And then I wanted to also mention to you that some other things you can do with the lemon curd is you can put this in little tarts. You can put this on top of yogurt. It's delicious on top of yogurt, in tarts, um, on pies, anything that you would like to add, just a little bit of sweetie tangness to your, um, to your food, just go ahead and add that lemon curd. And then the same thing with the Devonshire cream. You can add this to um, anything that you might wanna use whipped cream for on top of, and it just gives it just that little extra tang from the sour cream. My husband really likes it on apple pies, believe it or not. All right, and so that's it for today. I'm so glad you all tuned in to watch us make homemade lemon curd and Devonshire cream. And we'll see you next Wednesday when we make Scottish shortbread cookies. And don't forget to like this video, share this video, comment on it, post any other recipes that you would like to see me make in the future and we'll get around to those. And visit our website at RockyMountainLodge.com for the recipe and also you can purchase a cookbook there as well. Have a great day and I'll see y'all next week. Bye everybody.